welcome to Edinburgh Napier University MBA webinar. My name is Helen Spiropoulos. I'm the admissions manager at Stafford Global. And joining me this evening all the way from the university is Dr. Kiran. Good evening to you, Dr. Kiran. Good evening, Helen. Nice to see you. Good, it's lovely to have you with us again and uh, I've looked here on my right hand side and I can see quite a lot of you have joined us from the Middle East, from Africa. Welcome everyone. Um, how we are going to present uh, the program today is I'm just briefly going to introduce you to Stafford Global. I'm then going to hand you over to Dr. Kiran who's going to talk to you about the program. Now towards the end of the presentation, you will have the opportunity to type out any questions that you may have for me or for Dr. Kiran. I am going to be looking at these questions quite carefully because a lot of them are very similar if not identical, so I am going to be grouping them together. Okay, so let's get started. Who is Stafford Global? Now, Stafford Global was established in 1993, and we are a resource centre for six UK universities, one of which is Edinburgh Napier University. Now, we do offer a variety of programmes, ranging from certificates, diplomas, bachelor degrees, MBAs, MSCs, right through until doctorates. So we really do have all the programs for your personal and your professional needs. Now, the mere fact that you are here with us this evening means that you have been in touch with one of our experienced academic consultants. And our role at Stafford Global is to assist you throughout the entire application process, get that very, very important unconditional offer and begin your studies with the university. We also do offer um, some administrative as well as some academic support as well. Okay, so I am now going to hand you over to Dr. Kiran, who's going to take you through to the program, and then I will join you towards the end of the presentation. Over to you. Thanks, Helen, and it's great to be here to talk to you all today about the Global Online MBA. Uh, so I'm the program leader for the Global Online MBA here at Edinburgh Napier University, which basically means I'm in charge of ensuring a positive student experience and working with lecturers and the tutors on the program to, to, to make that happen. So today I'm going to talk to you about the MBA Online. I'm going to talk to you about Edinburgh Napier University and Edinburgh itself. Uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about our approach to uh, education and to assessment and feedback. Uh, which I can tell you now is all about flexibility um, and managing this program along with your other responsibilities. Uh, I'll talk to you then about the specialisms, uh, the specialist routes you can take on the MBA and the modules that are involved in that, as well as going into a bit more detail about the assessment and feedback, which I know is often a concern for people who are uh, maybe working full time and want to do, uh, do a program of study as well. So first, let's talk about Edinburgh. Well, it's voted the best UK city for the past two years, according to the Daily Telegraph. Uh, so really a, a great city to live in. Um, it's home to more tech startups uh, and a lot more finance companies than any other UK cities other than London. So it's really um, a hub for tech and for finance here in the UK. And it's home to the International Arts Festival. So some of you may have heard of the Edinburgh Festival or the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, two huge festivals that happen concurrently in August and really the, the entire city is full of people from all around the world. So if you ever get the chance to visit us, do feel free to, to, to come along. And of course, you can come on campus as well to see, uh, see the university as well if you want. In terms of the, the student population at Edinburgh Napier University, we have over 19,500 students uh, from across more than 30, 130 countries. And uh, about two thirds of those are studying on campus in Edinburgh. But then a third would be like you guys, if you've joined the program, studying at partner universities worldwide and online as well. So we have really well-oiled machine when it comes to uh, online studies. We are one of the pioneers of online study, uh, global online study here in the UK. And by this stage, we're actually, uh, I, think, I like to think we've become quite good at that. Uh, and we have a lot of infrastructure there to support our students online. Um, it is as important as, as the, the, the students uh, who are studying in person. In terms of the views on Edinburgh Napier, so don't just take my word for it that it's a great place to, to study at. Uh, we have some rankings and some ratings and some results over the last couple of years. We're number one million plus modern university for business management, a top five UK modern university for accounting and finance, if anyone's interested in that route. Uh, if anyone's interested in marketing, well, we're a top 10 UK modern university for marketing. We're the top ranked Scottish modern university in the Times and the Sunday Times Good University Guide in 2020. 
uh, were top 10 UK modern university for business in The Guardian. Uh, and their 2019 National Student Survey, if anyone's interested in doing the HRM route, uh, although all of you will be doing the HRM, some HRM modules, uh, no matter what specialism you take, well, our HRM subject group, that's uh, all the lecturers with who teach uh, HRM within the university, we received 100% student satisfaction in the National uh, Student Survey in 2019, which placed us number one in the UK out of all institutions in the UK that offer human resource management. So really uh, a nice result for us there. We have five QS stars for teaching, uh, for employability after the uh, uh, after you finish your program, and obviously internationalization. We're a very international uh, university, as you've seen, and we're a top ten in the UK for graduate employability. So that value add, uh, the program, uh, the the value that the program adds onto you as a as a potential job candidate, as a potential employee. Uh, we have a HR Excellence in Research Award from the European Commission. And the business school in 2019 uh, received an 84% student satisfaction. So a really high result there for student satisfaction from, from the students who took the survey. So that's our views on Edinburgh Napier uh, and why it's a good place to, to study and obviously to work in for me as well. Uh, and let's talk a bit, a bit more about what you've come here today for, which is about the MBA. So the MBA is uh, quite flexible in its design um, as well as its operation, which I'll talk about in the next few slides. In terms of its design, we have the general MBA route. So that's just a general MBA that you might get in other universities, um, similar to the, that different approach where you have a, uh, a wide range of topics. But you also have specialisms as well. So that there, if you are, for example, in a healthcare career and you want to do an MBA, well, you can do an MBA in healthcare management. If you're in marketing and you want to do a specialist uh, MBA in marketing, we also have that. You'll see we actually have 13 different routes when it comes to the MBA, 13 different specialisms. And so what does that look like in practice? Well, all students will be doing uh, these four modules on top. So that's uh, management and organizational change, leading strategic decision making, marketing and building high performing organizations, and global business economics and finance. So those are what we call the core modules. Uh, and those two modules then in blue, uh, these are the ones that are swapped out for the other specialisms. So depending on what route you take, you will be taking these four core modules, but two different modules that depends on the route. Uh, so for example, if you want to do uh, the general MBA route, you've taken those four modules plus managing innovation and contemporary issues and strategic management. On the next slide then, I'll show you the other, uh, the modules that um, you can take with the other specialisms. So again, you'll do the four core modules, but let's say you wanted to do the MBA in finance. So as well as the four core modules, you would do global finance and finance for managing decision making. If you wanted to do uh, an MBA in project management, you would do project management and managing innovation. So really, this is where that specialism comes from, comes from the, the specialized modules as well as the MBA project, which I'll talk about now. So you'll have completed six 20 credit modules and that's uh, the baseline that you need to do before you go on to your MBA project and the project is what makes it an MBA it shows that you're capable of doing independent study of linking that up to business needs and business practice uh, so before you do the MBA project we know that many of you might not have had experience in doing research projects before there's a lot of terminology that has its own jargon its own philosophies uh, it's on different approaches, so we know it can be quite confusing. So we are not going to throw you directly into an MBA project uh, on your own. First of all, you have a supervisor that's assigned to you. The supervisor will have expertise on the topic that you choose. Remember, you can choose any topic you want for your MBA project. Um, if you're in a specialist route, it just has to align with that specialism. So if you're on the marketing MBA route, you would have to do a marketing project, obviously. Uh, so you have your supervisor, but we also, before you do your MBA project, we have another core module, which is called Research Skills for Managers. And that's where you get an overview of quantitative research, like statistics, frequencies, uh, um, uh, charts, graphs, um, t-tests, correlation analysis, things like that, uh, as well as qualitative research, which is things like interviews, focus groups, um, ethnography as well. So two vastly different approaches will be covered in that research skills for managers, along with things like research integrity and ethics uh, and different approaches to research philosophy as well. So by the time you enter into your MBA project, you will already have had a, quite a good grounding on doing qualitative and quantitative research. And then the choice is up to you which approach you want to take. So as I said, the topic is entirely up to you. You have a 40 credit module there, so it's double the amount of credits um, that you would normally have for the other modules. 
Uh, it's entirely up to you what topic you want to do. It's a really in-depth exploration and discussion and, and research, obviously, of a particular topic. That could be of relevance to you in terms of your own uh, interests. Could also be a relevance to your perhaps your current organization or maybe future organizations you want to work in. It's really up to you. As I said, then depending on what topic you, that you choose, we will match you up with a supervisor who is a member of staff here at Edinburgh Napier who will have expertise in that particular topic. And as I always say to my, to, to my dissertation students, it's really up to you what you want to study. As long as you can somewhat link it up to the MBA goals and objectives, you can really choose a wide range of any topic that you want. So let's talk briefly about the exit points. Now, hopefully and uh, ideally, we, we want you to stay for the entire MBA. But for example, if circumstances change, then we have different exit points there as well. So individual modules carry an award. So if you completed, for example, management and organizational change or leading strategic decision making, uh, you will get an individual module award. If you complete three modules, so that's 60 credits worth, that's what each module is worth 20 credits, so three modules, uh, you would get a postgraduate certificate if you exited after that. If you then double that, you go on to your six modules. For example, you complete all uh, six core modules, um, or sorry, all four core modules along with your two optional modules, your expertise modules, uh, then you would have your postgraduate diploma. As I said then, when you do your research skills for managers, which is 20 credits, and your MBA project, which is another 40 credits, that's where you get your 180 credits, which would entitle you to an MBA award. So hopefully, as I said, you'll stay with us for the rest of the, for the, the entire M MBA, uh, but there are exit points in, in, in operation because we know sometimes people's life circumstances change. Talking briefly about the types of modules that you'll study. So for example, all of you, if you join the MBA, will be taking these four core modules, as I said. So let's look at them. So we have management and organizational change. So organizational change, change initiatives are part of every organization. It is the one real constant in organizations is change. So obviously we've had huge changes in the last two years because of the pandemic. We've had changes because of the financial recession here in Europe and in the USA. Uh, there's big changes, but there's also going to be small changes or medium-sized changes that affect every organization. For example, you're moving into a new market. You want to develop a new product. You want to um, highlight a new customer segment, for example. All these different changes will require changes in the layout of the organization, in the alignment of people and resources. Um, and sometimes people don't like this. People don't necessarily always like change in organizations. So it's the role of the manager and the leader then to lead that change initiative, which is what you'll study in this module. The next module then is leading strategic decision-making. This is what we call a hybrid module because it's a hybrid of both leadership theory as well as strategy theory as well. So you'll look at different ways of implementing and coming up and designing with, uh, designing a, a strategy, but then you'll also look at how to lead that within the organization to be the leader that uh, enables that strategy to happen, to assign resources, to bring people on board with this initiative. Marketing and building high performing organizations, again, is another hybrid module. Uh, as you can see, it's a marketing module, but it's also an entrepreneurship module as well. So once we build this high performing organization, we make sure that it has high performance metrics and KPIs in, in, in involved. Um, how do we then market it uh, on a global level? Global business economics and finance, basically looking at the finance and the, uh, and, uh, the accounting environment within the organization as well as outside the organization within its particular market, its particular industry, and obviously with on the global stage as well. So those are the four core modules that you'll study uh, no matter what MBA you do. As I said, then you will go on uh, to look at uh, your particular specialism. So as I said, we have um, specialism, 13 different routes here, uh, a, a variety of different specialisms that will suit your own particular career. And we do have expertise and experts in, uh, in this across the business school. As I said, we have, uh, we're based in Edinburgh, which is the home of the Edinburgh uh, Fringe Festival and International Festival. Therefore, you will have lecturers who are part of the hospitality and tourism management uh, team who have worked within these festivals, who have provided consultancy, for example, within these festivals. So no matter what route you take, there will always be some specialists, some experts on hand to give you advice in terms of your modules, but also who will be your potential supervisor for your MBA project as well. Really, the MBA project, I think, is the most exciting part of this program. So let's talk about kind of the setup of the program, the approach we take uh, when we're delivering this global online education. 
as you know, it's a 100% online. You will never have to come to campus to, to receive any, uh, any lectures or tutorials. 100% online. And it's what we call asynchronous. So synchronous learning is when the learner and the teacher is in the classroom together, um, or they're on the online classroom together and they're teaching, um, they're, the teacher is teaching as well as the learner learning at the same time. Asynchronous is when there's a, a division there. So basically our lectures and our tutors will upload our study material, the lecture materials, onto the online learning environment, which is Moodle. Uh, and then you can learn that at any time that you want. You can access that and, and listen to those lectures at any time you want. So in that way, it's flexible. You study at a time, a place, and a pace that suits your own circumstances to meet, meet your own personal demands and your own professional demands. A lot of our learners, a lot of our MBA students are um, have full-time caring responsibilities or full-time uh, jobs and careers as well, um, maybe both. So we know that for a lot of people, full-time study, going into a classroom, going into a lecture hall uh, and being present on campus isn't going to be possible for them. So that's why we developed this program. And because of that, we know that uh, we, we take a flexible approach and we know that people have different circumstances there. So if, for example, you joined the program and you weren't maybe able to, uh, to, to study for one trimester with us, then you could suspend your studies, for example. You just enter in a conversation with myself or the global online team. And we'll have a conversation with you about um, how to make sure that you meet that, uh, that 180 credits. Uh, and as I said, we're very flexible in our approach and we like to, to be as, as flexible as possible in that regard. There's high quality materials. So our lecturers and our tutors are experts in their, in their field, as I, as I said, and we've developed engaging, interactive and self-directed learning. So as well as having those lectures and tutorials that you, or so lectures and, and uh, live academic sessions that you'll have, um, you can also, uh, you'll also be able to, to follow the material in your own um, pace and it's interactive as well. It's not just reading and listening all the time. There will be some work that you can do to, um, to, to, to meet your goals there. Truly really international student experience, as, as you can see, even on this call, we have people from all around the world. Uh, and that is really uh, true of the Global Online MBA. We have uh, people from all different continents. Um, and I think that that really adds to the, to the experience as well. We have things like discussion forums within the uh, different modules online. And that's where you really see the variety of backgrounds and experiences that, that leads to this um, uh, international student experience. And actually, it helps you look at different um, how the theory works in different contexts uh, and how different practices would work in different countries, for example. We have three intakes per year, January, May and September. Our next intake is in January. Uh, and I'll tell you a bit more about the applications in a second. Uh, in terms of our assessment, so you'll be provided with both formative feedback and summative assessment. So what do we mean, mean by that? So formative feedback basically is constructive feedback that your tutor will offer you to help you to achieve your learning outcomes. Uh, and so it's not necessarily, uh, it, well, it isn't with formative feedback, it isn't a grade or it isn't a, you know, a letter grade or a percentage or anything like that. It is just kind of uh, ideas for improvement, ideas where you may have gone wrong, uh, ideas where you did, or things where that you did well, and ideas how you can improve for future assignments. That's what we call formative feedback. And that will usually be written formative feedback uh, that you can note. We also then obviously have summative assessments, and that's the kind of assessments that you'll probably be used to or have heard of uh, with our grades or percentages. Um, and so we use a scale that goes from uh, P1, which is a, the, the, the lowest pass grade, up to a P5, and then we have distinction grades D1 to D5 as well. In terms of the, the layout of each module, we take a similar approach to each module just so for continuity, just so you know um, when you're entering into the uh, into the program what you what you can expect. So for each module we have an end of unit progress test and that's 10 academic units with online questions at the end of each unit. You can take them on a week by week basis. Um, they're somewhat designed like that but obviously you can take them in any time you want as well. You can do a couple at a time. Uh, depends what your own professional personal demands are. So these are going to test your knowledge and understanding of the key concepts um, within each unit and these count as 10% of your final module mark. As I said, you can do them at any time you want um, before the end of the trimester. Then we have an end of module assessment and that's worth 90% of the entire module mark. So this is the big assessment for each module. 
And so depending on what the actual topic is, we'll have different forms of assessment. So for example, in your leadership and strategic decision-making module, you might have an essay or a report. In your finance module, you might have some kind of uh, more financial analysis. So uh, that is worth 90% of your module mark. That is due at the end of the trimester. So it's um, it's very much, you will be told about it at the first week of the trimester, but the end of the trimester, that's when you have to submit it. And that's really the only deadline you have on this program, again, because you don't want to be, if you have all these different uh, professional and personal demands, you don't necessarily want to be thinking about deadlines all the time and when is this essay due and when is this report due. They're always due at their last week, uh, week 13 of the trimester. The assessments, as I said, will be on, undertaken online. And these will be described in the approved module descriptors. So we have module descriptors for every module in the university. If you do want to dig a bit deeper into a particular module, then just the easiest way is just to Google it and that'll take you to um, you know, the, the, the module title along with Edinburgh Napier. That'll take you to the module descriptor page. And so then we have quality assurance processes in place just to make sure that, uh, just to ensure that uh, Napier is uh, obviously offering quality awards. Uh, as part of the quality assurance, process, the module leaders will sample a number of summative assessments and the portfolios as a check that the work submitted undertaken is that of the matriculated students. So that's basically a plagiarism check. Uh, obviously, uh, I don't think any of you will be involved in plagiarism, but if there is any plagiarism or suspect uh, there's a suspected uh, issue of plagiarism, then we do have online vifas as well. So uh, a, a written, uh, sorry, a verbal assessment uh, along with the module leader. So that's just a quality check in place to make sure that uh, Edinburgh Napier is, is upholding its own standards. And our trimester and the module outlines is divided, uh, our academic year is divided into three trimesters, 13 weeks within each trimester. Uh, so trimester one, so this will be the next trimester that that will start in January, runs from January to April and you will do two modules. Um, uh, ideally you would we cover two modules. Again, if you do feel that maybe you don't think you're going to be able to study two modules, then you could just study one module as well. You could draw it out a little bit more. Um, but usual, the usual uh, pace that we recommend is two modules per trimester. So trimester one, starting in January, you'd cover two 20 credit modules. Again, trimester two from May to August, another two modules. And from trimester three, September to December, another two modules. So by the end of the first year of your MBA, you will have covered six uh, 20 credit modules. That's the four core modules along with the two uh, specialist modules. And then for the next trimester, then you'll go on to your research skills for managers module, quite a complex module. So it's best taken uh, throughout one trimester. And then within your last trimester, that entire trimester is devoted to your MBA project. Again, um, a significant piece of study there that you will be collecting data, you'll be analyzing that data, um, and you'll be then writing up your dissertation. So uh, a trimester is definitely needed for that. In terms of the different trimester outlines, the different schedules, as I said, um, your submission of your final assignment isn't due until week 13, no matter what the module is and no matter what um, trimester it is. Uh, week one, you'll have access to the module uh, materials on our virtual learning environment, which is Moodle. Some of you might have used Moodle before. You'll have your online induction and you'll commence your studies. And then from weeks two to 12, you have module study. And notice there's nothing really else there. It's really entirely up to you, the pace and the, 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 the place that you, uh, that you take part in this module study. It's entirely up to your own professional and personal uh, needs and demands. In terms of the entry requirements and fees, so I'll give you the basic information here, but obviously if you do have any questions, then you please contact your staff or global personal consultant. But in terms of entry requirements, we have uh, we, we require an honours degree at 2-2 or above, plus two years relevant work experience. That should be relevant, uh, basically, more or less basically to the particular specialism that you're applying for. Um, although we could obviously have conversations about how you think that you meet those entry requirements. Comparable alternative uh, qualifications or professional qualifications and relevant work experience may also be considered. But for example, if you have 10 years work experience, but you don't have an honours degree, or if you don't have an honours degree at 2-2, um, then please enter into a conversation with us um, with, through your staff or global consultant. We'd be delighted to, to talk to you about that. Um, and the selection of the suitable candidates is at the discretion of the head of the MBA programme, so, so my boss. An alternative to the MBA for those without work experience is the MSc in business management. That starts in both September and January. So that is a, 
Uh, it's not an MBA, it's a Master's of Science in Business Management if anyone doesn't have relevant work experience. If your first language isn't English, then you have to provide evidence demonstrating that you can conduct yourself in English. For example, if you've conducted a previous degree in English or the if you have the results of an English language test like IELTS. And for more information on that, you just please contact your staff or global personal consultant. Um, we'll be more than delighted to help with that. So the next application deadline is the 15th of December 2021, and the program then starts on the 17th of January 2022. So not too long to go. Uh, so do get in touch with your staff or consultants um, who will be able to help you with that application. In terms of fees as well, I'm going to pass it off to the staff or global personal consultant as well. So here is the Usher Hall. This is where uh, everyone is invited to graduate. I was there last month for our first in-person graduation since uh, 2019, I think. Um, so really a, a memorable day and a joyous day for everybody who's involved. And we hope to see you there within a year and a half, two years time. So uh, if you have any questions, please direct them to Helen and uh, I'll stay on the line to answer those. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Kiran. It was very, very informative. And yes, so there have been quite a few questions that have been coming through whilst you have been speaking. So let's actually get through to them as quickly as possible. Right, a, a very interesting question from Abdul Karim. Um, in the event that I wish to start this MBA program but exit on a postgraduate certificate level, what are the advantages of that? for me? What are my career prospects with a postgraduate certificate? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I think it really will depend on your your own particular context. So in terms of the advantages, what well, signals, signals to your employer is that you're capable of, uh, of advanced critical thought and critical analysis, which is, which is useful no matter what field you're in. And the fact that you've covered three, so if it's a postgraduate certificate, I'll just go back here, it's a postgraduate certificate. You'll have 60 credits, so that's three modules. So you've shown that you you can um, you can demonstrate at a master's level uh, advanced critical analysis, which I think is useful no matter what employer it is. It's also just advantageous to think about it in terms of your own particular context. So you might have uh, particular professional demands or personal demands, so caring responsibilities, for example, which means that you might not be able to, to carry out the entire MBA. Um, so in that regard, you know, with that flexibility there means that it's advantageous for you who do, uh, if you do have those uh, responsibilities. Um, I would also say as well, though, that um, usually we will have a couple of students every year who will say uh, i have a huge work project coming up or i have had a parent who suddenly needs me to care for them full time and i don't think i'm going to be able to to carry out the uh, this trimester's work what are my options and usually then we would enter into a conversation with them and the usual outlook or the usual outcome is um, a suspension of studies. You can suspend your studies for a number of trimesters. Again, in con conversation with myself and the global online um, team, uh, you can suspend your studies for a couple of trimesters uh, and that usually helps people get back on track because it relieves some of the tension, relieves some of the pressure to think, okay, I can stop my MBA for one or two trimesters and then get back to it when I have more time and when, I, when I'm when i able to dedicate as much energy as possible to it. So you can obviously uh, exit with postgraduate certificate and there are advantages to that and certainly it is better to, to exit with a postgraduate certificate than have nothing at all. Uh, but as I said, if you do have those responsibilities or if there's a peak in the, the work that you need to carry out in your professional life, then enter in a conversation with us and we'd be more than happy to talk about suspension of studies for a couple of trimesters. Excellent, excellent. And that actually also just covers um, a question by Aria. Um, so if I do exit the program, I can obviously come back at any point and, and basically start from uh, where I left off. Okay, and that again is the flexibility of, of the program. Um, okay, and Abdul Karim, with regards to your working experience, I would love to see a copy of your CV um, and you can either send it through to me or to your personal academic consultant. We all have to look at your roles and responsibilities and then we'll be able to advise you if you're eligible for the program. So please do get in touch with us on that. Okay. Oh, interesting question. I have seen that there's quite a lot of specializations. Do you offer a specialization in artificial intelligence or will you be doing it in the future? 
So at the moment, our MBA is just entering into review um, along with our colleagues in the Department of Teaching and Learning. So it's just starting actually within the, the next couple of weeks. Uh, and so certainly then we're going to be looking at different specialisms. So at the moment, we don't have an MBA in artificial intelligence, but that's certainly something that we're thinking of. Um, and we're also thinking of things, uh, really hot topic issues as well, like sustainability, sustainable leadership and management, as well as diversity and inclusion. So um, it, it is, we don't have it at the moment, but it is a possibility, a potential, uh, and it's good to get that feedback as well. So then I can bring that to the review and say that somebody was asking for that. Um, at the moment, I think our closest one would probably be the MBA in information system strategy and governance. But again, that's 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 as close as possible, but it's not really in terms of uh, artificial intelligence. But for example, if you were in the IT uh, field, then that could be an option for you. Absolutely. Okay. And how many times can I submit a particular assignment if I happen to fail it? Which we so, hope that you will not, but yes, continue. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, absolutely. And I, I think um, we do have a number of checks in place to make sure that uh, work responsibilities or personal responsibilities don't eat into one's time when they're when they're doing a particular assignment. So I'll start with that. If you do have an assignment due and you think, well, something has just happened in my work life or my personal life, then uh, just email your module leader or email myself, the program leader, um, and ask for an extension. We allow extensions up to 10 days, and we can also defer the assessment if it's going to be a more long-term situation. You can defer the assessment uh, to the the following trimester. So we have those kind of catches in place to make sure that uh, you know that doesn't happen because of that. If for whatever reason though you do fail the assignment, you are given one reset attempt um, that you can attempt in the next trimester. So. Um, and in exceptional circumstances, we'd allow another attempt, but that would be very much by exception. But in most people, um, or sorry, everyone is is entitled to one reset uh, attempt at that. Okay, good. And a question from Sam. Um, I'm thinking of taking two modules per trimester. In your opinion, um, what is the average hours that I should be spending on uh, on my studies? And uh, is this actually viable? option if i'm a very busy person mm -hmm. certainly it is it's it's viable because we do have that flexibility in the design and i think even if you're working full time i think we know that some some weeks are a bit more tough than others so i think that flexibility allows that um for uh two modules i would say a couple hours a week per module again it depends on your own learning style and approach i think if i were to do the the, the program i would probably dedicate between uh five and ten hours each week on that but uh, again, that's entirely up to you. Um, some people might take the entire Saturday and Sunday to, to catch up on uh, four units worth of work, uh, and other people might do one unit per week. So, really, I suppose it's, it's really kind of up to your own context you know, and what's going on in your own work life and personal life. Uh, to depend on that, um, I think you will actually be the best judge of that. But it's entirely possible, um, and usually that is our recommended route. That even if you're working full time, uh, or if you do have full time caring responsibilities, that that two modules per uh, trimester would be um, achievable. Good, and um, I've noticed that there are uh, core modules which are obviously um, the same through all the specializations. Is it possible for me to then take more than one specialization? Unfortunately not. That's a, that's a popular question, I think, because some people, yeah. you know, they, they, li they like looking at the different specialisms. Fortunately, the nature of the specialism and the, 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 the structure of the program means that you can actually only take one specialism. Um, the MBA project as well has to be about um, your specialism. So for example, if you're doing a marketing MBA, you'd have to do a project that is in some way related to marketing as well. So uh, because of that, we wouldn't actually be able to offer two specialisms at once. Okay, and a question from Reem. Will the MBA leadership and innovation tackle sustainability? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is. Um, it's a, kind of an ongoing conversation within the leadership. I teach a bit of leadership myself, and this is um, usually an ongoing topic within uh, the leadership literature and leadership uh, teaching and learning as well. So we will be offering um, some some uh, discussion and some uh, lecture materials, learning materials on sustainable leadership um, as well. Uh, I think at this point it's probably enough now to warrant a, a, a completely different, completely new MBA on sustainable leadership. So that is one thing that we're thinking of, of potentially in, introducing within the, the, the next couple of years. 
Okay, um, and I will answer Miriam's question. Unfortunately, she has lost her degree certificate in a fire. Um, very sorry to hear that, Miriam, but please do send your CV through to us. Um, we'll be able to then have a look at it and advise whether you can actually apply on the basis of your working experience. So if you can send us that, that will be fantastic. If you do have any other professional qualifications that you may have completed, please do send that through as well. We'd love to actually see um, your CV on that and we'll assist you as much as we can. Okay, and which email should I send my CV? Okay, um, so Dr. Kiran, if you can just scroll towards the end of your presentation, they'll be able to see my CV, uh, my CV, my apologies, my email. Okay, so Abdul Karim, there is my email right there, helen at staffordglobal.org. Uh, please make sure that you do send your CV through to me and then um, I'll be able to assist you on that as well. Okay, interesting question from Bassam. How much is the program capacity? How many students usually do you have per each one? Now, I'm not too sure if it is speaking about each specialization or if it is per cohort. Mm. So there are actually, uh, that is a good question. There are, I suppose, more popular specializations. So the kind of the more, uh, the more common and more popular specialisms would be things like HRM, uh, and marketing um, and, and finance, and then obviously the the core MBA um, or the kind of the, the the vanilla MBA, as sometimes we call it, that is also also very popular as well. Um, in comparison to more specialist routes um, like the the IT one. Um, so at any one time, we have I think the last update I've got from our global online team was that we had a thousand and fifty six students. Uh, on all of our programs, we had 1,056 uh, students across um, across all the programs. As I said, most of those would be within the core um, MBA as well as the, the kind of the, the, the HRM and the, the marketing one. I don't have that exact breakdown, but I know those are the most popular. Um, really, in terms of capacity, we you know we have um, quite a big capacity because it is online learning and because the the lecture materials once they're recorded, they're available for everyone to 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 to. Um, um, to partake of, so we don't necessarily need any, or we don't have any physical requirements when it comes to capacity. If it was an in-person program, then we are kind of uh, beholden to the the capacity of our of our physical rooms. But um, because it's online, we have a very very big capacity, so nothing that uh, you would need to worry about in that regard. Good. Okay, and a question from Bilal, all the way from Iraq. Um, two questions. The first one, I have taken the diploma course. Um, so will I be able to start from the beginning? Um, okay, I'm assuming Bilal, you have completed a postgraduate diploma um, from what I gather. Um, and you're basically asking if you will then continue with an MBA with a postgraduate diploma. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that is what I'm reading from this question. Um, I'm, I, I can answer that, Dr. Kiran. If you have got a postgraduate diploma from a, an approved institution, which is equivalent to a UK level seven, uh, we'd like to see that because we can possibly ask Dr. Kiran and his team to look at your qualifications for possible exemptions. Okay, so if you are going to apply for any exemptions, we also would like to see the learning outcomes so that Dr. Kiran and his team can actually map them and make sure that uh, you have met all those criteria. So I'm assuming that is what you've asked in, in that question. Um, okay, next uh, question that we have is, I have noticed that the program um, is 21 to, to 33 months. Um, in your opinion, there's a lot of MBAs out there that are eight months, nine months, and one year. Um, is that possible to complete an MBA in one year? Why is your MBA 21 months? Mm, so that's a good question. And I think uh, a lot of MBAs, a lot of our competitor MBAs, um, I think would be um would in terms of the, an eight months or 12 months mba that would require a lot more weekly commitment in terms of the amount of hours that you'd have to put in to that it would be approaching more of a full-time mba than a, than a part-time mba like we have um so the the kind of the the the, the last um 
or the, the maximum amount of time of 33 months really just reflects that people might um, drop down to one module per trimester, or they might take a bit longer, they might have a suspension of studies within that as well, just kind of reflects the flexibility within within the, the design. So I suppose the reason that we have uh, such a long-ish uh, MBA compared to your competitors is that it is part-time and it is very, very flexible. And we uh, it is designed with the kind of the working professional or someone with a lot of caring responsibilities in mind with that regard. So uh, to answer the question, it's about flexibility. Uh, and it's about the amount of work that you'd have to do every week to achieve that MBA. Okay, and a very interesting question that has come through. How relevant are your study materials? So I, th I think in terms of uh, kind of modern modern day... Uh, relevant yeah. to today's environment and, and modern and up-to-date. Yeah, absolutely. We definitely we would enter into a module review every year. Um, so our lecturers would would be required to look at all the uh, the lecturers and the module leaders would be required to look at all the uh, module materials to make sure it is relevant and then then add anything that uh, maybe they missed or something tr transpired over the last year. So certainly it would be as up to date as possible with regards to um, to kind of modern management and modern leadership as well. Um, and you can see that some of these. Um, specialisms as well are very much up to date like for example managing innovation or security audit and compliance um, by design they have to be kind of up to date so those materials would be would be um, updated very very frequently um, and we also use um, in, in our teaching as well we would use case studies that usually would reflect recent events online so when I'm teaching I would use case studies from something that maybe happened only a couple of weeks ago and putting the person into the, the role of the leader or the manager within that organization and saying, what decisions would you make in that regard? What's the number one priority here? Because in that way, then it starts to anchor the theory a bit more, um, well, you know, a bit better than just reading about the theory. If we read the theory and then anchor it or apply it to something that's happened within a couple of weeks, then that um, that really helps us to remember it and really helps us with their assignments as well. So, answer your question as as up to date and as as relevant as possible uh, in that regard. Absolutely, and um, please do get in touch with your academic consultant because we do also have um, module descriptions for you. So you are very welcome to have a look at that um, and see if this is really what uh, what you are actually looking for. Okay, can I actually go through into a PhD once I have completed your MBA? So the MBA route wouldn't be a normal route to a PhD. The MBA is more for those practitioners. Um, however, it is a master's degree. Um, it's a master's of business administration. It is, as I said, more practitioner focused rather than more research focused. However, that's not to say that you might, uh, for example, do your MBA research project and then suddenly discover, actually, I quite like doing, uh, doing research. That's what happened with my master's. I was going to go straight into the workplace afterwards. And then I thought, actually, I, I really like doing this research. Uh, I think I'll do more of that. And then I went on to a PhD. So it wouldn't be a traditional route, but it certainly is a route that you could um, potentially um, go on to a PhD with. Um, when it comes to actually choosing PhD candidates, that really is about um, a conversation with the candidate and their own background, their own skills and their results as well. So if you have that in mind, then yeah, obviously get in touch with any module leaders or any academics you think would be a good PhD supervisor and we can certainly have a conversation with you about that. Absolutely. And a lovely question that has come through. Do you have any networking for your students in the industry? Hmm. So we do have uh, guest lectures. Um, I just posted uh, this morning actually about a guest lecture that we have from uh, a, a UK organization um, who is, uh, I, think, I believe he's the marketing manager, the marketing strategy manager within that organization. And they would offer guest lectures for the students. As a global online student then, uh, because these guest lectures are online, you'd also be invited to that. So we have networking opportunities with regards to uh, those guest lecturers coming in. Um, we also encourage our, uh, our our students when they're doing the MBA project to make connections with that. And that just kind of adds a, a kind of an air of authenticity about it. When, when you go into an organization and you say, I want to talk to your HR manager, I want to talk to your um, your your CEO because I, you know, I have an interview for them or you know I want them to take part in my research study, that you have that backing of a university behind you usually 
helps you um, kind of overcome some maybe doubts or some reluctance you might have than just cold calling them yourself. Um, um, so we do have networking opportunities. A lot of people make networks during the actual MBA project just from talking to people and collecting data from people who work in those organizations. Lastly, then we do have um, a global online LinkedIn network, um, which I'm one of the moderators on. And that's where we would post things like the guest lectures. So that's people, um, those guest lectures are also open to alumni, I should say as well. But that's just a space where people can connect with each other. Um, we also have spaces and discussion forums within our virtual learning environment, Moodle. And then, as I said, once you once you are finished your your degree, you can then go on to the the LinkedIn uh, network, and you would constantly then be be able to to connect with other people uh, across the world, across different industries. Um, and we do get a kind of a very wide range of people there, so um, it, it, it's a nice networking opportunity for that. So a couple of different networking opportunities there, yeah. Fantastic. And um, when are graduations actually held? Do you have two graduations a year? And is distance learning mentioned on my degree certificate? So. With regards to your second question, distance learning isn't mentioned on the degree. It's uh, you'll be uh, conferred with the Masters in Business Administration, uh, and it's not mentioned that it's, it's through distance learning or online learning. Um, in terms of the graduations, then the last graduation is uh, that I was attending, as I said last month, in October. So we have an October graduation. We usually have a July graduation as well. So two graduations per uh, per year. Um, because we because of the pandemic, we had to have those online, but Thankfully, now we're moving to in-person graduations. And as, a, as a, someone who's graduating from Edinburgh Napier, you'd obviously be invited to attend that if you're able to come over to Edinburgh and graduate in person. Excellent. And uh, is it possible, this is a very po popular question, is it possible to study online and then transfer some of my studies to full time? Is there a combination of both perhaps? So unfortunately not. That's a good question. Unfortunately not. And the way it's just because of the way that the programs are are set out differently and they're structured differently. So with the with the the part time global online, obviously there's specific uh, there's specific aspects of flexibility in that. Whereas the full time program is more full on and it's more catered towards people um, who who can study full time. So there is kind of an incompatibility there in terms of the, trying to, to to balance between the two. So you wouldn't be able to go on to the full time program. However, as I said before, if you were in Edinburgh and you wanted to come on campus or to access the library or something like that, then you could absolutely certainly do that. Um, and use some of the resources available to you there. Good, and I have noticed that um, there is an accreditation um, in the process. Um, it's ACSB accreditation. Um, can you please advise when this will be finalised? So our AACSB accreditation, as you said, is currently underway. Uh, I believe our next visit, we, we were going to have a kind of what's called a mock visit from the AACSB uh, headquarters uh, within a couple of months' time, I think very imminently actually. And then we will have the kind of the official visit then, um, which is uh, where the, the accreditation um, is agreed upon um, if we're accredited. Um, and that'll be, I believe, next year sometime, um, around this time next year actually, I believe it will be. Um, so that is what, you know, we're, but we're currently kind of aligning to the, all the AACSB requirements in uh, preparation for that as well. So, as I said, it's not quite, quite there yet, but it is definitely imminent. Okay, I have done an MBA, well, I've done part, sorry, correction. I have done part of an MBA at a, another institution. I am not very happy with their tutoring or support. Um, how confident are you with your tutors and the support, academic support that I will get from the university? Yeah, definitely confident. I think we uh, we we try to hire the best tutors there that are available, um, and we do have tutors who have a wide range of both practical and academic experience. Um, so as well as being able to 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 you know, lead a live academic session, for example, um, and to provide high quality materials, they can also draw upon their own personal experience within the workplace as well. So they're able to provide some practical examples there of the theory that they're that they're teaching. So. 
Um, I'm fortunate to hear that you've had uh, some some issues with your your previous MBA. As Helen says, we can enter into conversation with regards um, exemptions, but uh, certainly because we've had the MBA up and running for quite a few years now, and because we have so many students from all across the world, uh, we'd like to think of it as a well-oiled machine. Um, and if there were any issues, then we do have quality assurance processes in place through both myself, the global online support team, our quality team, um, as well as obviously going up to higher levels, um, the head of MBA programs, for example. So yeah, 100% confident in our, in our tutors and our process and policies. Excellent. And um, can I choose whichever modules I want to take? So for example, can I take one core module and one optional module? So the... The, the the choice that you have within the global online MBA is regards to the um, the specialism, um, and you choose the specialism rather than the individual modules. So, for example, um, you'd have to you'd have to do the the four core modules, and then the choice comes in within your specialism. So, um, for example, if you wanted to to do the MBA banking, you do global finance, financial markets, institutions, and banking. However, we are quite flexible. We know circumstances change, and I often get a couple of requests per trimester from students who maybe have started off in, on, uh, let's say, the MBA uh, health management. Uh, and then they actually thought, you know what, my interests lie more in uh, project management. So that is actually, I believe that that exact combination is something that, that crossed my desk a couple of weeks ago, um, where the students started off with health management because they worked in the healthcare sector. But then they realized through kind of reflection and through some further study that actually a lot of their work was regard the uh, the management of projects. So they thought MBA project management was, was more suitable for me because they were within the core module stage. So they were only in the first couple of trimesters of their MBA. They were able to then choose a, a different specialism because they hadn't started the modules within that. So you are definitely not locked in to uh, your certain your specialisms. Um, you can obviously have a conversations with us in, in that regard. However, when it comes to the individual modules, there is a particular path of trajectory that you would have to follow to get that MBA award. Right, good. And um, is it advisable to you know to do the two modules at the onset of the program? And then, if I do not, if I'm not comfortable with that, can I actually move to one module and vice versa? Yeah, absolutely. I think you could you could definitely have a conversation with us about that. Um, and obviously, with yourself, Helen, and, and the the Stafford team um, would be able to advise on that as well. Um, we, as I said, we know that certain circumstances arise that you just can't. Um, dedicate all your time to to two modules or to one or even to one module and you might have to suspend studies so definitely just we would say just keep in touch and just uh, get in touch with us um the worst thing that, that, that could happen is that you don't talk to us at all and we don't really have any information on you you know so um keep in touch with us and we will uh, devise a plan for you to reach your academic goals Ken, I have been informed by uh, the Stafford Academic Consultant that induction is very important. Uh, why should I attend this? Um, and that's my first question. My second question is, in the event that I cannot attend it, is it recorded? Yeah, so we do have um, uh, the induction. We do have some recordings available. However, I think that we do have a lot of um, different processes in place that if you didn't, weren't able to attend the induction, then um, you know you will to get kind of uh, separate inductions for different aspects of um, you, you know your student experience and the student resources. The induction is important to attend because uh, we have things like the introduction to, for example, the library. So the library, which you will be able to use both, you know, if you were in Edinburgh, you could come in to to, to the, the library and uh, and take a seat or access some of the books there. But obviously, for the global online environment, we do have a lot of online textbooks, a lot of online journals as well that are available through the library. So you will always be using journals and textbooks throughout your your MBA, no matter what um, no matter what specialism you're taking. Um, so it's important then that you know how to access these. So when you're doing your assignment in the, you know, hopefully not within the final week, but I'll, 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 throughout the trimester you're doing your assignment, 
you don't want to be spending some of your assignment time just trying to figure out how to use the library, for example. So the library, for, for example, is covered within the induction. It's also an induction to just kind of the, the people, the people who are involved in the in the MBA, both myself, the program leader, but also a global online uh, team and the administrators, the, the large team of administrators there that are designed um, to help you to feel more comfortable and to, to, to achieve your academic goals. Um, just knowing who to turn to when it comes to whatever queries you might have. If you have an academic query, you can come to me. If you have a module specific query, you can go to your module leaders, uh, et cetera. So it's just knowing who to contact that is also covered in induction and also the range of additional resources, maybe not necessarily academic resources, but non-academic resources that are available to you as an Edinburgh Napier online student. For example, our mental health services, um, our uh, writing workshops, things like that. So induction is basically just your introduction to the university, to all the resources that are available to you and I suppose expectations and people that are involved on the MBA. So for that reason, we'd say, it's important. It's also just important just to get your your head in the game, to get your mind kind of engaged within the uh, within the the process itself. So we'd always recommend you do attend it. Um, however, we do have recordings available, and we do have separate individual inductions available as well. And obviously, all the people there are um, available to answer any questions you might have. Excellent. Good. And I have one final question, which is regards to the assessments. I've noticed that uh, there are assignments um, and there are no examinations. Is this then a weaker MBA? Because there are a lot of MBAs out there that do offer examinations. Would your MBA be deemed as a weaker MBA? Well, certainly not. I'll say certainly not. Um, I would also actually counter and I'd say in some ways it's actually a more rigorous MBA. Because if you think of an examination, if I think back to when I did my undergraduate degree, I think was probably the last time I did an examination. Um, you know, I, I can't really remember anything. It was about, about biomedical science. I can't really remember anything that I covered um, in my examinations. I usually would, would cram the information in um, the week before or a couple of nights before, and then I would regurgitate it on the paper and then promptly forget about it. It's in one ear and out the other, basically. Um, but when I when we moved on to my master's, which is in business management, the master's that I had in, in, in my old university um, was, was uh, assignment based as well. And I actually found that was a lot more useful for me as a student because I was constantly working on something that required me to do an analysis. So all the information is there. Just like in the workplace, just like in any project you'll be working with in the workplace, the information is there if you go out and look for it and collect it. It's then how you analyze that and how you form a critical analysis um, and form recommendations and practical and think of practical issues, for example. So in that way, it's more rigorous, it's more engaging um, in that regard. So you will know in your week one of each module what your assignment is um, and it might be based on a case study, it might be based on a financial analysis. You will then have to go collect the data and then analyze it and come up with some recommendations, come up with a report, come up with an essay. Basically, how you would do in a workplace where you have a particular problem or a particular issue or a particular project that you're working on, go out, collect the data, analyze it, and then come up with some practical solution. So in that way, it actually kind of more resembles the workplace. And I would I, I would argue, because I'm the, the product of such a master's, that it's actually more rigorous and it's more engaging than an examination-based master's. And increasingly, that's actually um, when it comes to pedagogical uh, the pedagogical research and literature, so that's literature and research about teaching and learning, they are increasingly re more recommending um, that move from examination towards more continuous assessment. So um, I think we're kind of very much moving with the times and we're keeping really up to date with regards our uh, feedback and assessment strategy in that regard. Okay, good. And uh, just one more question that is just squeezed in. You mentioned the accreditation process, which is the ACSB. Um, how does this change or apply to the current program? So you would, uh, I believe if you had graduated, um, I'll have to check this, but I believe if you graduated from the, the program before we got the accreditation, I think you could you could say that you graduated from um, a, a now accredited AACSB a, a uh, institution, um, and if you had um, graduated after it was uh, after we are accredited, then you could say it's an accredited program. So at the moment, you wouldn't be able to say it's an accredited program with AACSB. We do have other accreditations, but uh, you wouldn't be able to say it's with AACSB 
um, but afterwards then you'd be able to say it's with AACSB accreditation. So um, and that's important to, I suppose, some employers. Uh, it's really not important to a, a lot of employers. So um, I don't think in reality probably wouldn't come up too much in a job interview situation or uh, a candidate selection uh, situation. But uh, yeah, I believe you wouldn't be able to say it until it, uh, we've officially got that accreditation. Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. And yes, um, a question for me there. Um, this has been recorded, this session. So if you have missed out points on that, do not worry. I will be sending that through to um, all our attendees uh, that were with us this evening. So I will definitely be sending you this recording. Okay, so I've managed to actually get all those questions together. Thank you so much, Dr. Kiran. It was very, very informative. Again, thank you everyone for joining me. It was lovely questions questions, um, quite interesting questions that came through this evening. As Dr. Kiran has said, uh, we have our application deadline on the 15th of December. The program does start on the 17th of uh, January. Please do get all your application documents to your academic consultant as soon as possible so that we can get that very, very important unconditional offer for you. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a very good evening. Thank you again, Dr. Kiran. Thanks, Helen. Have a good evening, everyone.